because we're so separated from death and dying in our society, we have such fear around it. We don't know what death looks like anymore. But when you have a shroud burial, you can't deny that there's somebody dead in that vessel. Lauren Carroll has worked in the funeral business since she was 20. In the last decade, though, she's been handling deaths differently. This is a green burial. I mean, we all know what a burial is. I mean, we've grown up and had loved ones die, friends die, but what is eco-burial? So the biggest difference is it's an unembalmed body. The materials we use will break down and they will truly become the earth again. This is how Americans used to bury most of their dead. But in the 20th century, funeral homes got into the business of sanitizing death, making it palatable for people and toxic for the planet. The first time I saw an embalming, I told my family I will never be embalmed and nobody I love will ever be embalmed. It's kind of barbaric. I mean, you're literally draining somebody of blood and then jabbing them to fill them with fluids that are gonna preserve them. Embalming fluids are made of cancer-causing chemicals, including formaldehyde and methanol. Last year, Americans put about six Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of it into the ground. And that's not even mentioning the caskets. We learned recently that each year in America, we bury enough steel and concrete and hardwoods to build the Golden Gate Bridge every single year. And we're just burying that directly into the earth. The most popular alternative, however, isn't much better. Each year, cremations in the United States release the same amount of CO2 as 70,000 cars. In states around the country, environmentally conscious members of the funeral industry are searching for new ways to dispose of bodies that won't hurt the earth. Jason Bradshaw and his family have been in the funeral business for four decades. In 2013, he added a new option, water cremation. Water and potassium hydroxide heated to 305 degrees dissolve the body. The official name for the process is alkaline hydrolysis. How big of an impact is this really having? This uses about one-sixth the amount of energy as flame cremation and has about one-fourth uh, the amount of emissions that come from it. That environmental benefit appeals to 58-year-old Betsy Johnson. I had breast cancer two years ago, and so that got me to do a will. Yep. I do have questions about the specifics because I work in a medical diagnostic company with a lot of scientists. And um, the majority of them are millennials, and they're very concerned about the earth about the and the environment. Yep. My millennial scientist said, oh, but what happens to the they called it soup. The water? This the toxic soup. Gotcha. That's when you're done. Is it considered a biohazard then? Nope. No? It's not a biohazard. It's probably one of the few sterile things that actually goes into our wastewater system. So <laughs> is the water changed then in between people, I would assume? Oh, absolutely. Okay. That, that's kind of what I knew, but I had to ask it anyways. Not everyone is content with dumping these liquefied bodies down the drain. So over here, you can see it's ready to go out to the field. All these, all these jugs here are, are human, um, human remains. Yes. In liquid form. Yes. I'm not a typical funeral director. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Gasvoda built his own water cremation machine. He wants to turn human remains into something that's actually good for the planet. And he spent years working with engineers and scientists to create his own process which he calls alkaline hydrolysis 2.0. This process takes about two hours to actually get a complete dissolution of the body. So that means all that's left is bone and organic matter. The bones are crushed and given back to loved ones, just like ashes would be. And then you're pumping all the liquid out of here and putting it into what? So at the, at the end of the process, we open this up. We use this pump. So one end goes into this barrel. The other end goes in here, and it, this is what draws all the essence out specific to that human into this vessel. It's full of micronutrients which replenish the earth. Can we see the liquid inside and oh, see sure. what it looks like? Definitely. It almost looks like oil. It's much lighter than oil. It's more watery. 
Is it strange to you that you're holding essentially a human body in your hand in liquid form? I think it's uh, it's uh, wonderful. I mean, the alternative is we would either waste the human just by burying them and taking up land, or we'd have to have their particles go up in the air. I mean, I, I use it on my yard. I've been fertilizing my trees with it, adding it back in. I want to return it to the earth, not to the sewer. Gazvoda hopes bioessence will eventually be used on crops across the country and plans to donate his liquid remains to farms and tree nurseries. A landscaping business in Parker, Colorado was the first to give it a try. Do you think uh, by fertilizing your trees with something like this, that it might be a tough sell for your customer to know that they were, their plants were fed by, by this one's <laughs> human juice. Yeah, initially, I think it would be. But I think over time, too, um, people will see the benefits and, and utilize it. What would you tell them to alleviate some of their concerns? I guess what I love about trees and plants is it's nature. And, you know, in a, in a way, this is nature. It's not chemists putting chemicals together to create a fertilizer that's going to help a plant. It's nature's form of helping the plant. 